is the X100F, the ultimate travel camera. This is the camera that I take with me on all of my trips, both day trips and longer trips. I just got back from Hawaii and I had some thoughts about this camera. For those of you that are looking to pick one up uh, and haven't pulled the trigger yet, there are a lot of upsides. It is a very unique camera. There are some downsides. I'm gonna try to share both with you and uh, let you decide for yourself if this is the right camera for you. Throughout this video, I'm gonna put some photos on the screen so that one, you don't have to look at my face the whole time, and two, you get to see the image quality that comes out of this camera. So first off, it is a lot of fun to use. It's a uh, form factor is really, it feels good in the hands. It is made out of metal. It has all these buttons and dials that are fun to move around. It has a viewfinder, which I think is super important in a travel camera because I found that going out in broad daylight, that's most of the time when I was taking photos, the, if I was using the LCD screen by itself, uh, the sun would, the glare would kind of make it impossible to see the screen. So having the ability to hold the camera up to my eye was, it made it more immersive and I could see if I was actually in focus or if I had the um, exposure right. It does have an electronic viewfinder. It has a hybrid. So it has both, uh, if you wanted to use it as like a range finder and you can see all your setting information inside the viewfinder on both. It has a fixed lens, which is 23 millimeters. It, so that means it just doesn't come off. That is, could be a deal breaker for some people out there. This isn't my only camera. So for me having the single lens, um, it's kind of a breath of fresh air because it means that I don't have to worry about what lenses to bring with me. I have this one, I put it in my backpack. Um, I made another video on this camera about a five-year review, and there's a lot of comments about the digital zoom. So it does have a digital zoom. It zooms out to 50 millimeters and 70 millimeters. So it has 35, 50, and 70. With the digital zoom, it's only you're only able to enable it with when you're shooting in JPEG. So if you're somebody like me that shoots raw plus JPEG, then I'm not able to use the digital zoom. But if you're somebody that's just shooting JPEGs, it does have the extra, the ability uh, to zoom out to 70 millimeters. Another downside, I was in Hawaii where a couple days it rained, so this isn't weather sealed and I didn't feel comfortable taking it out of my hotel room. I just left it at home or the home away from home and just use my iPhone. If you're somebody that's gonna be going to a really wet place or wanting to get those rainy day photos, then maybe this isn't the camera for you. There's definitely um, compact cameras that are weather sealed. So that's one of the downsides. So one of the things that I think is really cool and unique to Fujifilm, their whole lineup has this. It has film simulations. It has seven or eight built in already. And then within that, you could build your own custom film recipes. So if you Google film recipes, Fuji film, film recipes, you'll see that there's lots of blogs and websites dedicated to different film recipes. Basically what you're doing is you're taking one of the film stocks and then adjusting some of the white balance or the, um, the grain effect or the noise reduction. You're just adjusting the colors to make kind of a custom preset. So I think that's really cool for two reasons. One, if you're using the EVF, you get a live view of your custom preset before you even take the photo. So you can see exactly what you'll be shooting and you can adjust if the scene isn't looking the way that you want it to. The second reason is I don't have to edit any of the photos. I feel confident that I got it right in camera so I can spend more time on my vacation instead of behind my computer or on my phone with Lightroom Mobile or something like that. So <clears throat> it does have Wi-Fi also. So if you have friends that are <laughs> impatient and want to get the photos right away, I'm sometimes one of those people, I can hook my camera straight up to my iPhone using the Fujifilm app 
and then just transfer the photos and then I could airdrop them to my friends. Those two reasons make my life a lot easier and it gives me, like I said, the opportunity to just not think as much about photography during my trip and just be part of the experience. So I wanna circle back to the lens. I mentioned that it is a single lens. There's an upside to that. This camera has a leaf shutter, which means the shutter is inside the lens. Typically, in most cameras, they have the shutter inside the body. This, because it's a fixed lens, you're able to put the shutter inside the lens, which may, means it's really quiet. When you are photographing people, sometimes the shutter sound kind of irritates them or intimidates them. This camera makes people feel at ease. It doesn't feel, no, I've not really felt uncomfortable shooting anybody or felt their uncomfort coming back at me. So the look and the feel of this and the sound are some major upsides with this particular camera. Uh, there, my old camera that I had had a pancake lens. It was the same thing, but it had a shutter that was just super loud. And that definitely affected the way that I shot. I wasn't able to get candids that were super sneaky. Um, so that is a definitely unique thing to this particular camera. Okay, so let's talk about one of the major downsides of this camera. Um, this is something that on my last video I made, I was thinking I was helping people out because it's an older camera at this point. It's, I think, five or six years old. And I thought that the price would go down. So I paid brand new $1,200 for this camera on the used market right now. And this might not be a downside for people. I know uh, value is in the eye of the beholder. So maybe all the unique features and how it looks and how it feels is valuable to you and it um, doesn't matter. But to me, I am a huge fan and supporter of buying used gear. And the reason for that is you get to have a camera that has really great features at a cheaper price. So typically you'll get a older body for up to like $500 less than what the current retail price is. So this camera is still $1,200 used. And when I told that to my brother, he actually is like, so are you gonna sell your camera? And I was like, no, I'm not, I, I'm gonna keep mine. But, cause I love it. So if you are gonna buy a used one, I would just ask the seller what the shutter count is on the camera. It's really easy to find. It's in under the wrench menu. Um, this particular camera has 23,000 shots on it. So I have used it quite a bit. I probably wouldn't pay a full $1,200 for this particular camera. I would use that as a negotiating tool. So keep that in mind. They are the older camera. So is the X100F the ultimate travel camera? For me, it's definitely a high quality, high value camera. I love going on trips with it. I love making and capturing memories with it. I definitely feel like I'm part of the fun instead of just the photographer shooting. If you're someone that thinks that having one lens is super limiting, then there are definitely other options out there and there's definitely Fujifilm options. Next, go check out this video on the X100F's customizable buttons. I go through all of my menu, what I set up this camera to do. There's so many options. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Fuji film, Fuji films, Fuji film, Fuji films. Am I the only one that's adding an S onto Fuji film? Uh, it feels more satisfying to say Fuji films for some reason.